Now, the story which has dominated many of the front pages over the past few days, uh, a lot of well-known faces involved in this, senior members of government, even the Prime Minister. Yeah, we're talking about the plight of Geronimo, the alpaca. Now, after testing positive for bovine tuberculosis, Ger Geronimo has been condemned to death by a High Court judge. But his owner, Helen MacDonald, has said she will take a bullet before she lets that happen. Well, let's go live to Helen. She joins us alongside Geronimo there to tell us more uh, this morning. Um, as the situation stands, Helen, there is a, a death sentence on Geronimo. Yes, there is. Um, they have another 24 days um, to come in and execute him. Um, explain to people, um, Helen, how when this started, because this, this has been going on for four years, which seems an incredibly long time. Yes, yes. So uh, we imported Geronimo from New Zealand four years ago, and, and in New Zealand he had had... Um, routine internationally recognised uh, TB test uh, and so when we brought him in we wanted to uh, use the surveillance test uh, which was recognised by our industry and it was best practice. The rest of my herd is tested with this particular test um, and so Geronimo tested positive um, to uh, produce some antigens, uh, antibodies to this test. Uh, we raised it with DEFRA, they agreed it was um, unusual uh, they agreed to retest him uh, but unfortunately they didn't use the test as it was validated they gave him more of the tuberculin uh, and so they could then have a suspicion of disease based on an antibody response to the test and uh, you know people say he's failed two tb tests he hasn't failed a validated test uh, nobody knows uh, what the effect of tuberculin is in camelids they're a unique uh, a unique species, they have a unique immune system. And so, you know, I didn't want him to have any more tuberculin. That was the whole concern four years ago. And, um, and I was not allowed to not have it. Um, so we then obviously started in dialogue and legal proceedings. And um, if the government have a suspicion of disease, no matter how it's created, then... That's, that's in law, is, is what they can do. Um, so you, you've been... My, what I would like... Sorry? You've been fighting this for four years, but last week a High Court judge has issued a fresh warrant to give access um, to the farm... Yes. Um, ..so that representatives can come and... Um, I think it's a lethal injection or a gun. Now, you have said this is absolutely not going to happen. Who has been to the farm and what do you intend to do now? Well, um, we had a visit from the police on Friday who wanted to find out, um, you know, what we were thinking, um, what the lay of the land was. We had a conversation with them. Um, we don't want, obviously, anyone to come in and, uh, you know, break into our, our farm and, and kill Geronimo. We've got a lot of supporters here. Um, and, the, you know, it is avoidable. This is something... Four years ago... DEFRA made a choice about how they handled this case and they didn't handle it in a scientific way. They didn't listen to industry. And then we found out after this uh, that they actually knew that this was a possibility. It's documented that false positives are produced on this test when they've had repeated injections of tuberculin. So the test isn't valid. And so what okay, I'm asking you, you want for a definitive is test. test. You want a definitive test one way or the other. Uh, they're saying, no, not for you. They're not going to treat you any differently than they would any other farmer. Now, there's a lot of farmers, obviously, have had to go through this. They've seen yes. their, their herds wiped out. Um, Geronimo, for you, is Geronimo a pet or is Geronimo livestock? Well, he's, he's, a, he's a breeding animal, um, but he's also a, a much-loved member of my family. All my alpacas are. I'd just like to take the point that, you know, the cattle, the cattle industry, they have a policy, they have a testing regime. What happened to me, in DEFRA's own words, was exceptional. I was treated exceptionally. They deviated from, from the protocols that are laid down by the industry and were agreed with DEFRA, and they did that deliberately... And they actually recorded that in writing. So okay. my question is, why, why am I... I'm being treated differently. It's not a case of uh -huh. me trying to conform with UK policy. 
So, so Helen, this could be easily sorted, you're saying. Give you the definitive test. That's all you want. Why, well, why can't officialdom yes. not just accede to that? Um, from, a, from a legal point of view, there's, they, are not, they don't have to grant a test. So if I get one, illegal, I'm breaking the law. Um, if... Um, <laughs> If um, they won't give me permission, so Secretary of State can give me permission for this test, to, to, which I would accept the result of. And I think because the original tests were flawed and they knew they were, I think it's only right that four years on, my healthy animal um, is subjected to a test. If it's positive, I would accept that. But with, they stepped outside of, of policy and protocol for this case exceptionally. So, you know, he came from a very highly biased, uh, health, high herd health status farm in New Zealand. They have never had a case or a suspicion of So, TB if in the executioner years. turns up on your farm, what are you going to do? I'm not going to break the law. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, I'm not going to be helping them execute my perfectly healthy animal just because officials decided to deviate from, from what was agreed in industry. I, I just don't think that's fair. And I think, you know, if he was part of a validated testing system and that is what had happened to him, we wouldn't be having this conversation today. Well, the Environment Secretary, George Eustace, has said that he has looked at the case several times over the last three years and gone through all of the evidence with the chief vet, other experts, and he says, sadly, Geronimo has tested positive twice in a highly specific and reliable test. So you're saying it's not reliable, he's saying it is reliable. So, so what happens next? Well, you know, I don't know how he can say that because the highly reliable test that he's quoting is actually an Enfoplex test, which is what Geronimo had, but without any tuberculin. So the statement that he's making is false, I'm afraid. Um, and, you know, the evidence is not there. They've had four years to produce evidence to appease me and make me agree to euthanise him. And they don't have that data. They have not taken a group of alpacas taken a baseline blood sample and then repeatedly injected them with tuberculin and measured what happens. And so what's happened to Geronimo is so unique and they cannot justify it. There is no science. Even their own scientific experts cannot produce that data. So all I'm asking for is for George Eustace to accept that the test he had was not valid four years ago, that the second test was, was manipulated to produce a further antibody response in Geronimo, which test developers agree yeah. was not suggestive of disease, um, and to give him a test now. But, Helen, I'm just fascinated. There's going to be a march on Downing Street with people with alpacas. Uh, we hear that you may have a protective ring around Geronimo if the, um, the euthanizer turns up. Um, why are you getting all yep. this attention, yet farmers who... And we've seen thousands and thousands of cattle uh, having to be put down because of this every year. Uh, they don't seem to get the same attention or the same sympathy. I think the issue here is that we all know, and it's very, very clearly evidence, that Geronimo did not catch TB in New Zealand, which was what Jeff claimed in 2018. Um, in a way to justify the test results that John May had. And I think, you know, this is an injustice. This is something that people get behind because here we have an animal who's been running around for four years with his friends. No one he's ever been in contact with has ever succumbed to tuberculosis, either in New Zealand or here. And so, you know, the, the UK situation is that we have an endemic TB problem. And so the, the cattle farmers are unfortunately in a situation where the skin test is, is, is the standard. And, you know, that, that is the policy. So this is a different situation. And what, what Geronimo could do for everybody is to, to highlight the fact that we all need to work together to improve testing so that we can identify diseased animals and keep healthy ones safe. And this was all this was about with this voluntary test. We did this to, for best practice to keep our herds safe and to be able to trade with confidence. And, and, so, and, and what are your chances of cha changing government view on this? Because as it stands, Geronimo could be put down at any time. They could turn up uh, as soon as we finish yeah. this interview to, to euthanise him. 
they could they could turn up this very minute. And um, you know, I, I would just appeal to the Secretary of State to please actually accept that the evidence he's quoting is not the right. It's not what happened to Geronimo. It's not the same test. Um, I would ask Boris Johnson if he wouldn't mind just putting a halt on this while we all sat down around the table, looked at the evidence, and worked out a really positive outcome to this, so that. You know, we can all move forward. We've got an alpaca industry with 45,000 alpacas in it, and we all want to be able to have a test that's safe to use to keep our herds healthy and be able to trade. Okay, and it's no. very short sighted to ignore that. Well, a, a spokesperson for DEFRA says that bovine tuberculosis is one of the greatest animal health threats we face today. It causes devastation and distress for farming families in rural communities while costing the taxpayer around £100 million every year. Therefore, while nobody wants to cull infected animals, we need to do everything we can to tackle this disease, uh, to stop it spreading and to protect the livelihoods of those affected. Helen, obviously we haven't heard the last of this. Um, good luck to you. Um, other farmers will have their say. There's two sides uh, to this story. Defra's had its say on this. You've had your say. So... Um, we we'll wait to see what happens. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Helen.